Guess who's back? Back again. Yes, I'm back. <laughs> Tell a friend. Okay, folks. You might be wondering, uh, you know, why I'm here appearing in person in the flesh. In the hideous, rotting flesh, as it were. Um, and why I'm wearing this incredibly itchy wig. It's kind of in my way. Two reasons. Uh, one, as you know, YouTube have really been screwing me over. They literally hate me. Every video I try and put up that's got clips of movies in, which is like all of them because I am a movie reviewer, gets automatically taken down. It really pees me off because I spent ages making the films, put them up, and then they're gone. And then I, like, you know, try and, like, distort them all so that you can still see them, and they still take them down. So I can't win. So from now on, I think I'm going to have to start appearing in the rotting flesh to talk to you about phantom movies once more. Second reason I'm wearing this wig is we're going to try and fix the Dario Argento version. You might have seen my previous episode where I suggested how I would fix the uh, Hammer Horror Herbert Long version. Now that was already a pretty good movie. How on earth are we going to fix the Dario Argento movie? Um, I guess we could throw it in the bin. I mean, that's the obvious thing to say, isn't it? Like, just kill it, start again from scratch. But I'm, this is like a challenge, like a writing challenge. I'm going to assume that Dario gave me the script. I'm his script doctor, and he says, go and do uh, one more draft. But, you know, keep, keep some of my ideas in. You know, the ideas I really like. So I need to think what is actually good about the Dario Argento version. Um... Well, I like the maid. You know, the maid's, the maid's good, the maid's funny. I don't know if she was meant to be funny, but uh, yeah, the maid's funny. So keep the maid, definitely. Boost her character. Um, I like the little rat catchers. And I can only assume, like, that the idea of the Phantom being raised by rats is something that Dario really cared about and really wanted. So I'm going to challenge myself and keep that in, but make it not stupid. Now, that is a challenge. I'm going to try and get rid of a few of the more wacky things and do it a little bit more realistically, but even so, the idea of a man being raised by rats and having that somehow realistic, it, it's not going to work, is it? So, I think to start off, I'd change the mood and make it much more fantastical, like, almost like I want it told by an unreliable narrator. I want it to be almost like a legend, and we're watching, like, the telling of the legend, so like, it may or may not have happened, it's like a dark fairy tale. So to start that off, um, I think we're going to have two rat catcher characters. Or, you know, Joseph Bouquet and a female assistant, or whatever. But I, I say let's keep it with rat catchers. And maybe generations of rat catchers have lived in the opera house, and they are passing down from father to son, father to son, this strange le legend. And today this rat catcher is telling this, you know, this other female rat catcher, the strange legend. Have you ever heard of the strange phantom? The strange rat creature that used to live in this opera house. And you'd be like, no, no, tell me. So this is my backstory, the new backstory of the Phantom. I'm going to keep that he was thrown in the water by his mother, but in the Dario version, like, there's no reason for him to be thrown in the water. He's not deformed. You know, at least in Batman Returns, like, he had a horrible disfigured face and the parents couldn't cope and they threw him in the water. That makes sense, okay? So I want my Phantom to be horribly disfigured, or deformed from birth, as he should be in the book. And it's a horror film, he should have a disfigurement. I don't care if Julian Santos want to get in the makeup, he is going to be disfigured, okay? So, then we see him get thrown into the water, we see the rats raising him, and now, you know, I'm a bit vague on how, like, he gets to boyhood, you know, just does he suck all the rats' milk? I genuinely don't know, like, that's why it still needs to be, like, kind of a vague legend, and maybe, you know, the stage and, you know, the rat catcher woman was like, oh, how did he, you know, how does he survive? You know, we'll, we'll come up with that. Um, then, I wanted to cut to many years later, we're not going to say how many years later, we're going to have two rat catchers down in the bowels of the opera house, and they stumble across, like, these tunnels, and then, I thought it would be cool if, like, you know in, um, have you seen the movie The Descent? Like, a bit like that, so it's like, it's all dark, and, you know, it's only lit by a few basic lights and candles and stuff, and, like, there is something moving. The little rat's creature, the monster that has been raised by rats, is scurrying around. Because if you were raised by rats, you would be feral, right? 
you would not be able to, well presumably you wouldn't walk upright because you've never seen anyone walk upright. You would scamper around. Like the idea of someone being raised by a rat is actually kind of interesting and so we'll keep it because I guess Dario wanted to. But let's go all out with it. He wouldn't be standing upright. He wouldn't be able to speak. He would talk in like grunt and he would be like a little feral monster. And the idea of coming across that, like, you know, if you're watching this movie, you're expecting Phantom of the Opera. And then you see this creature, this naked, hairy monster just leaping out. And to make it even more messed up, right, it's a child. He's only like maybe five years old and he's like super fast. He is just, he's a terrifying feral rat boy with a horrible disfigured face. His face maybe looks a bit like a rat, you know, uh, uh, into the bargain. Maybe that's why the mother threw him into the sewers with the rats, maybe. So he's like an elephant man, rat man kind of thing. But he's just a boy, but he's super fast, he's super strong. And he just like jumps on their backs and he's gnawing at their faces and it's really terrifying. Okay. Then, the little boy obviously kills uh, the guys, but he also gets injured in the fight. So, um, he's dying, the little rat boy, and he sort of jumps into the water and floats out, out of the Paris Opera House, along the River Seine. You see, the problem I've got with this version is that if he's been raised by rats, how is he going to speak English? So I sort of took, like, an idea that maybe he'd be injured at the age of five or six or whatever. He floats away and he's discovered. He is discovered by, like, carnival sideshow people who pick him up and realise what fine they've got, and so they display him as a freak, as a rat boy. Then we will have, like, maybe some kind of uh, doctor who works for the freak show, and he's kind of sympathetic, and he takes, we'll call him Eric, under his wing, um, and teaches him to read and write. And so over time we see this, this development, and it's, it's kind of like the Joel Schumacher one, He's got a life in the sideshow, and like that's where he gets his education and stuff. So he gets to maybe ten years or ten years old, and um, you know he's now educated. He can he can speak. He can read and write. He's pretty smart. That explains how Rat Boy has learned English, and of course now he can walk upright. Makes sense. Much more sense than Dario's version. Yeah. So now, and again, I'm sort of borrowing from the Joel Schumacher version of all things. He, Eric, like kills his captors and escapes and goes on the run. And where would he go? He's got nowhere else to go but his old home, the Paris Opera House. What I thought would be interesting, again, is, um, and also similar to the Joel Schumacher version, when he's in there, he encounters somebody, he encounters a young girl. This time, he encounters Christine. Christine is a young ballet dancer, similar age, you know, 10 to 12 or whatever, maybe a little bit younger. So she's walking around the opera house and like she just comes face to face with this monster in the shadows and she screams and she's horrified. But the Phantom, like, this is the first time he's ever seen a girl and he just, he just gets a connection with her, although he's initially frightened, like he, he continues to observe her from the shadows and falls in love with her over like 10 or 15 years. We will establish, we'll, we'll sort of then go into the books for our influences that, you know, that she does believe that in her father and the angel of mu music legend, and that's how he thinks, hmm, maybe, you know, I can get in this way. So we'll, f we'll follow the plot of the book, and we'll, we'll have a few points out the Dario movie as well. I mean, we're not going to have psychic rats. We're not going to have the crazy dream sequences. We'll keep the crazy maid. We'll keep Raoul and Philippe, you know, why why not? They're not bad. And we'll keep the dynamic with the maid and with Carlotta. Carlotta is excellent in the Dario movie. We'll make more of a thing of that. And we'll just follow the plot of the book. We'll have, um, you know, threatening letters sent to Carlotta. You know, do not sing. Christine Dye sings, yeah? But she, of course, ignores it. And the chandelier is cut and kills everyone in a messy fashion. We'll have the Phantom of Christine, and we'll have Raoul, and of course, our good friend the maid, go on a little phantom hunting adventure. Uh, we probably won't have time for the Persian in this version, Persian in the Persian, Persian in the version, whatever, um, but we can utilise the Rat Patcher characters, because I absolutely love their cool little Ratmobile, and um, I think we'd probably pepper it throughout this movie, we'd probably have a few more scenes with the different Rat Catchers, like we need to establish this opera house has a serious rat problem and they employ like like 15 20 rat catchers so there's a big body count like every time you know every time this film gets boring we'll have rat catchers like descend down into the depths and the phantom will dispatch them 
post haste and as gorily as possible. Anyway, yes, so the phantom texture is staying down below, and why not? Let's have an unmasking. Let's see his adult face. You know, his weird, ratty disfigurement. Because it's a horror film. Let's have a disfigurement. So we can have that, and like, she is straight up terrified. Um, we'll try and make the phantom a bit more sympathetic, a bit more like Lon Chaney, like yes he is monstrous and he's still like kind of feral and totally insane, but this is the only woman he's ever loved and like he really really wants to be loved and like we'll, we'll get that across. So we'll have Raoul, the maid, and the two rat catchers go down on a phantom hunting quest. Maybe we'll have some sort of trapdoors and you know different uh, booby traps and all that kind of stuff. Um, rat catchers get straight up dispatched horribly for their rat catching killing machine. Um, also, I think it might be quite fun to have Raoul to be a bit more ineffectual in this version. Nobody likes Raoul. Let's make him totally useless. He gets killed to death. We're then left with the maid, the kick ass maid, taking on the mantle of the hero. She is going to be the only one who can save Christine. And you know, Dario, I know you're sleazy and exploitative, so if you want, why don't we like make it kind of like a lesbian thing? Like the maid is really into Christine, maybe they're both really into each other. Maybe Christine's into the maid more than Raoul. Or maybe it's unrequited, I don't really mind. But let's give the maid some power. She is kick-ass, she is the one who finds Christine. She is the one who stabs the Phantom repeatedly to death in a big final confrontation. The phantom drops into the water, the rats jump on him, maybe they devour him, who knows. Or maybe they give him like the little viking send off. And you know, Raoul's out of the picture, Christine and the maid together again, together at last as they should be, going off to have more wacky adventures or to, um, you know, I don't know, a good career in opera singing or in the police force. I don't know. And then we will sort of cut back to our framing device where the stagehand's telling the girl all about this and like she believes none of it. But then perhaps as they walk off we see like a shadow. Maybe the phantom didn't really die. Maybe he still haunts the opera house to this day. Maybe. What do you think? I'm not saying that would be a good film, but would that be a better film than the one we got? I say it would. I've managed to keep some of Dario's wacky ideas and still like keep it interesting and in the framework of a phantom story. We've still got a disfigurement, we've still got the mask, we've still got horrific elements for, for the Ardenta films. There'd be a lot of gore, there'd be like sex and nudity in it. Um, and it would be a lot of fun, I think. What do you think? Comment back down below and tell me how you would fix the Dario Ardenta version. Until I ever see you again, goodbye for... Now.